is happening, everybody? So in a previous video, I had gone over the reasons why I chose the Challenger 392 over the Camaro and the Mustang. In this particular video, though, I want to focus on why I did not choose the Mustang versus the Challenger. Now, I don't want to just sit here and talk shit all day long about Mustang. That Mustang's actually a pretty nice car. With one major exception, it's probably the nicest of the three. That major exception is that engine. It is gutless compared to the 392 in the Challenger and that 6.2 liter that's in the Camaro. Now, it, it's not that the engine doesn't make good horsepower. It does. But what it lacks is it lacks torque. It is, a, it is an unsatisfying car to drive under basically every possible conceivable driving situation except for wide open throttle. Now, the issue that I have with that is, look, under most driving conditions and most days that you're driving your car, you probably won't see wide open throttle, but you will see half throttle, three quarter throttle. And where the larger engines shine is in the ability to get the car moving briskly under partial throttle conditions. That five liter just does not do it. In fact, that five liter didn't feel like it even woke up until about 4,500 RPM. Now from 4,500 RPM on up to 7,000 RPM, it's, 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 a, it's an amazing bit of kit, but below that RPM, to be honest, the car felt like just a very strong V6. Now I know a lot of you guys that have Mustangs, if you're watching this, are freaking out right now because you love your car and as well you should, but I can tell you right now, if you didn't drive, a 392 Challenger, or God forbid you found yourself onto a Chevrolet dealership and drove the Camaro, you would notice right away a remarkable difference in performance down low. But that's not to say that the Mustang's a bad car. It's just not as satisfying to drive. Now, what made that situation even worse is if you take the automatic over the standard transmission in that Mustang. The Mustang is very well suited to being a manual transmission platform, but when you introduce the automatic transmission to the mix, it numbs it even that much more. In fact, the biggest drawback to that car, aside from the engine not making any torque, was the fact that it's got a six-speed automatic as opposed to the eight speeds that are in the other two. What that does is it just lends itself to not having that gear selection option for different driving conditions. And so you felt yourself kind of in between gears, if that makes any sense. And in those situations, the car just doesn't have the torque to get the thing moving. And therefore it just accentuates that problem even further. One other issue that I ran into with the Mustang was the transmission tuning itself. One of the problems with it is because the engine doesn't have that much torque, when you're rolling onto the throttle, the car just doesn't really feel as eager to get moving as it does with the Challenger. So therefore you find yourself rolling onto the throttle just a little bit more, only to find that the transmission thinks that you're really trying to take off and you need to move quickly. So it drops every gear that it can to get you in the most efficient gear for wide open throttle applications. And in that case, the car just takes off and hauls ass down the freeway. Well, that's great and that works fine only under wide open throttle conditions. But aside from that, again, very unsatisfying and a bit unnerving to be honest with you, especially if you've driven one of these first. If you drive one of the larger engine cars first and then get into the Mustang and you're rolling into the throttle expecting that torque to somehow find its way into, onto the party and then it's not there and then it downshifts and the thing just hauls ass and you go, whoa, wait a minute, you know, that's not what I was asking you to do. Whereas if you drive the Mustang first and then drive one of these, you'll find pretty quickly that these cars here are going to be a lot more satisfying to drive. Now, here's kind of a beef that I have with Ford when it comes to that five liter that they're putting into that Mustang. First of all, hey Ford, why don't you put something with a little bit more displacement in that car? Quit trying to hang your hat on the fact that you've got this technologically advanced engine in the car that does nothing more than leave people wanting for more. It doesn't make any sense, especially when you consider the fact that the driving experience with, with a car like the Challenger, which is marketably heavier than that Mustang, this car, because of the way the transmission shifts 
because of the torque uh, of that engine, it feels light. Whereas the Mustang felt heavy under uh, partial throttle acceleration. It just did not feel like there was anything underneath the hood of that car. So that being said, if you have a situation with a car that has no torque and then you give it a six speed automatic transmission that makes it even worse, it just makes it probably the worst combination out of all of the cars in terms of the performance package. Again, I don't see any reason why Ford keeps hanging on that five liter uh, architecture. It's kind of played out as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's been around for a little bit too long and, and at least in that configuration, why not bump up the displacement, put a stroker uh, crank in that thing, get it up to around five, three, or I don't know, 5.4 liters. You want to throw back in terms of displacement, Cobra R from 2000 had that 5.4, and it didn't seem to suffer too much from, uh, from bottom end torque either. Now, the argument against that is, is for the Mustang, though, will always be packaging. The overhead cam engines are much taller than the pushrod engines, and that makes packaging that type of architecture just that much more difficult. So. I don't see Ford going to a pushrod configuration anytime soon. And I'm guessing that basic, uh, you know, the, the geometry of how that, that platform is put together uh, and just the simple fact that the height of that engine is not going to allow for much more, uh, much more of a stroke, at least not in a, in a warrantable short block. I'm guessing that five liters is what you're going to be getting for a while longer. So that's my really, that's really my only rant on the Ford. No torque. The automatic sucks, and if you're going to get a Mustang, get one with a six-speed manual. You'll be a lot happier with it, um, but if you want something that is going to have more of an American muscle car feel to it, Challenger is really the only one that's on the market right now that's going to scratch that itch. Uh, if you're comparing the Mustang to the Camaro, it, it, buy the Mustang. So at any rate, leave your comments below. Thanks.